Over the years, we've bear witness to her journey. Once an inexperienced modifier with the new pact, to a courageous knight bearing the shield of an archaic oath. Now, after a long separation, she has returned, transformed, yet unbroken. Greetings everyone. In today's video we will be taking a look at the strongest light modifier in Ether Gazer, Dim Glare Verthandi. I shall forge my way. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. We release a complete guide for every new character making their debut on the global server. So if you would like to see more videos like this, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. We can all agree, Ether Gazer is a fairly underrated game. Liking videos like this one will help creators reach more potential admins and grow our community. Thank you. Dim Glare is a fairly straightforward modifier to play. Her primary mechanics are her shield, which can negate any incoming attack and trigger a time fracture, consumption of divine grace to fuel her skills, stage 3 follow-up attacks, the acquisition of Dawn from her skills stage 1 and 2 variants, and basic attacks to enter her judgement state. Her skill 1 and 2 does have a timing factor attached to them, forcing players to pay attention to the skill icon or the radiance emanating from her blade to successfully perform the third variance. But with practice, this shouldn't disrupt too much from the flow of combat. Yes, I should ask Admin to come have barbecue. Her basic attack has five sequences and generate a set amount of dawn and divine grace on hit. Her dodge skill has two functions. The first is your basic evasion while moving and will trigger a time fracture if the dodge meter is full. While stationary, she will instead raise her sword to block the incoming attack. Using an attack immediately after blocking will allow her to counter and trigger a time fracture if her dodge meter was full. In addition, each counters performed by her will shorten the cooldown of skill 1 and 2 and grants 5 divine grace. Skill 1 Flash of Brilliance showcases her newfound mastery of the sword by delivering two wide horizontal slash against the surrounding foes and priming her blade. Casting skill 1 again immediately after the initial cast will allow her to extend her attack with a third vertical slash with each stage granting her a set amount of Dawn and Divine Grace on hit. Casting the skill after her blade is fully prime will consume all available Divine Grace to unleash a stronger version of her horizontal slash. And for each point of Divine Grace consumed, the damage dealt is increased by 0.3%. Skill 2, Ripple of Fate, delivers three consecutive blows to the locked-on target before jumping into the air and priming her blade. Casting skill 2 again immediately after the initial cast will allow her to sweep down on the enemies with her blade dealing AOE light damage, with each stage granting her a set amount of dawn and divine grace. Casting the skill after her blade is fully prime will consume all available divine grace and descend on the enemies with great force, impaling her blade into the ground below, dealing AOE light damage. For each point of Divine Grace consumed, the damage dealt is increased by 0.3%. Skill 3, Slash of Conviction, can only be activated after the primed version of Skill 1. Skill 2. Or when her Dawn meter is full. While her Dawn meter is full, activating Skill 3 will impale the locked-on target with 3 massive sword projection resets the cooldowns of skill 1 and 2, and allow her to enter her judgement state. In the judgement state, performing the first, third and fifth stages of her basic attack, will summon the Hand of Judgement to deal an additional instance of damage against the surrounding foes. Casting stage 2, or stage 3, of skill 1. Stage 2, or stage 3 of skill 2, will also summon the Hand of Judgement to launch a coordinated attack against the locked-on target. Judgment State consumes one point of Dawn every 0.15 seconds and ends when her Dawn points reached zero. Her ultimate, Resolve of the Moment, channels her divine power to her blade to deliver a decisive blow against the surrounding foes. In addition, the team's light damage is increased by 30% for 10 seconds, and this ultimate's attack modification factor is increased by 120%. While in a party with Phantasmal Dawn Hera, their ultimate skill chain 
Light the path. Increases the team's light damage by 30%. Increase the modification efficiency of the ultimate by 120%. Boost the team damage dealt by 28%. Negate the resource consumption of one skill within 12 seconds after the skill chain was cast, and increase Vathandi's crit rate by 20% for 12 seconds. When a party member triggers a time fracture, she gains 15% of her ultimate charge. As you guys can see, her kit is fairly straightforward. The only issue you might have is keeping an eye on your target, and the visual cue for the Stage 3 variant of her skills. That said, do keep the following things in mind when playing Dim Glare. The second stage of her skills have a higher damage multiplier than stage 3 when using them without enough divine grace. So don't spam stage 3 just because you can. Only use it when you have 50 plus divine grace. The damage multiplier for skill 1 and 2 are the same at base S rank. So it doesn't matter which one you prioritize when your divine grace is full. At double S, skill 1 will have a higher multiplier so prioritize it when your Divine Grace is full. Now that we have a better understanding of her kit, here are the combos I like to use. Her Ether Codes change up her playstyle a bit, but these combos should still translate well. You just have to fit each code's gimmick into the rotation. In battle, close the gap on your target and weave in basic attacks and your counter whenever possible while using your skills in this pattern. For this encounter, use skill one, skill one, skill two, skill two, block and counter whenever possible with a full divine grace meter, skill two, skill two's third stage, skill three for the follow-up, skill one, skill one, skill two, skill two, skill three to enter judgment. Skill 2, or Skill 1's third stage to burn your Divine Grace meter. Remember, at double S, you always want to use Skill 1 as the burner. At base S rank, it doesn't matter which one you use. For Yellow, our rotation is pretty much the same, but your counter will allow you to unleash an extra attack. So each time you successfully block the enemy's attack, follow it up with two basic attacks instead of one. Again, our rotation here is the same as Red Code. The only difference is whenever we counter, we want to follow up with two basic attacks instead of one. Blue makes your basic attacks a core part of your kit by giving it some added mechanics. Your basic attacks third sequence can now prime just like skill 1 and 2. Reaching the fifth sequence after priming the third will allow you to follow up with skill 3. And yes, it can now consume your divine grace to boost its damage. Also, using your skills stage 1 variations without following up will shorten their cooldowns so it's a nice line for those of you who like to spam skills. Prioritize her ultimate skill 1, skill 3, skill 2, and finally, normal attack. When it comes to ether codes, 3 red is your recommended DPS line. This will increase the damage dealt in judgment mode by 12%. When attacks from the hand of judgment hits, its instant damage is increased by 10%, and modifying level efficiency is increased by 80%. Lastly, while in judgment state, she gains 3 Divine Grace every 0.2 seconds. 
In addition, Skill 1 and 2 will always cast their third stage ignoring the priming requirement. Yellow Code performs very similar to Red in terms of damage, and will also add an extra functionality to her parrying capabilities. Her blocks are very consistent, so this can definitely improve your enjoyment of the character. It will allow you to gain Dawn from counters when not in judgement state. Allow her to perform an additional attack after successful counters. Hits from stage 2 and 3 of both skill, 1 and 2 will now trigger an additional attack. Additionally, most of your skills and your basic attacks will be able to trigger their own instances of a block, and successful blocks from them will trigger additional attacks. All in all, yellow is an extremely fun line. We touched up on blue earlier. It allows her to spam her skills by shortening their cooldowns if she doesn't use their follow-up. It also adds some extra functionality to her basic attacks. By performing the first three sequence, she can prime her blade. Once primed, continue the combo to perform an alternate combo and trigger skill 3 for a follow-up. If you like characters that aren't just brain-dead spam X to win, the change in playstyle here might be pretty appealing to you. For the first time on the channel, I'm happy to announce the fact that we will be using a signature functor since it's freely accessible to all players. It will provide a 12% boost to independent damage. Increase the base damage of skill 1, 2 and 3 by 4.8%. When skill 3's follow-up hits a target, they will have their light resistance lowered by 4.8%. For each point of Divine Grace is consumed when casting stage 3 of skill 1 and 2. The instant damage of the skill is increased by 0.5%. And lastly, when entering modifying mode, skill 1 and 2 will have their cooldowns reset. <laughs> for our sigils, Lu Wu's Vastness of Heaven is going to be best in slot for 1, 3 and 5, increasing light damage by 10% and skill damage by up to 22.5%. For 2, 4 and 6, the new circle of time will provide a 7% boost to attack, increase modifying efficiency rate by 20%, improve resistance to interruption. And lastly, when an attack with a modifier of 200% or more hits, skill damage is increased by 10% and crit damage is increased by 30% for 16 seconds. As for enchantments, we are looking for attack, crit rate, Crit damage, light bonus damage, skill damage, and loop backs. Oh right, if you're having issues finding the sets I mentioned here, go to the main lobby, click on the event banner, click on joint attack, and logistics depot for the current set. For older sets, go back once and click on go. Complete these missions to unlock the disordered area. From here, pick the set you want from the bottom left. Some sets are only available on certain days, but Saturday and Sunday will allow you to farm all sets. <laughs> Warps gives you the freedom to personalize your characters in a way that best fits your playstyle. As such, the ones I recommend may not be the best ones for you, but if you want my recommendations, they are as follows. For slots 1 and 2, we want two power-up melee, one judge and one executioner. For 3 and 4, we want two telepathize force field ones and two EM flux, while in a party with her skill chain partner, you can replace the telepathize force fields with two unfetters for short fights. In longer engagement, the force field will be much more beneficial. For 5 and 6, we want 2 Evolution Particle 3 and 2 Kinetic Mods. If your skill chain partner has her functor, you can replace the Evolution Particles with 2 Absolute Zeros instead. Speaking of skill chain partners, Phantasmal Dawn Hera is going to be your best in slot for teammates. Here is the current build for Hera. with characters like Ling Guang, Heimdall, and Lu Wu as your third. You can run her in a light tier team, or with him as standalone on her team. 
And so our prodigal little barbecue fiend has returned. She may not be the strongest modifier around, but to say she's making a grand entrance back to the main stage would be an understatement. And before you start, and you always start, regardless of her position on the meta or where she falls on some superficial tier list, I think I speak for most of us when I say it's nice to have our girl back. Oh, sorry. 